Welcome to this City Engine Essential Skills tutorial. In this tutorial, we focus on exporting your City Engine projects into different formats that are compatible with rendering software so you can create compelling visualizations of your city. For this tutorial, we'll use a project called Complete Streets available at this bit.ly. Once you reach the home page, click on the Open button and choose Download. This will download the project to your computer. Once the project is downloaded, open it in City Engine. In the Scenes folder, double click on Low Quality Scene to load it into the viewport. The Complete Streets project consists of terrain, building models like we've seen in the other tutorials, and all of the procedurally generated models that have been created for this scene. Complete Streets is a robust procedural street example that incorporates knowledge and ideas from various sources of transportation planning knowledge. The project comes with a street rule that represents transportation planning treatments for complete streets within urban areas and common highway configurations. It's a great project to start exploring multimodal planning in urban areas. Now let's look at how we can export a project like this from City Engine. A nice feature of City Engine is its ability to take an imagery layer like this height map and convert it to a mesh for import into a rendering application or a game engine. To export this scene, first make sure all the layers that you want to export are turned on in the scene window. I can either select a subset of the models that we see in the viewport by dragging right to left and notice the polygon count at the top of the viewport. If you don't see this, make sure your information display under the settings is turned on. When exporting, it's important to keep the polygon count optimized for a particular rendering engine or application that you're planning to import into. First, let's look at how to export this scene to a City Engine web scene for viewing in the City Engine web viewer. One thing to keep in mind is the resolution of the terrain. Here mine is 1024 by 1024. In general, we recommend keeping the resolution under 4000 by 4000 to optimize the performance of the web scene. Another thing to consider in your scene setup are bookmarks. Any bookmarks that you create in City Engine will be exported as is to the web scene. The next thing is the initial view. Wherever your camera is set up when you do the export from City Engine, that's the first view people will have when they open your web scene. So make sure to choose a good camera position and direction before starting the export. Another thing that will be exported to the web scene are the scene lighting settings. This includes direct shadows and ambient occlusion shadows. In this case, I want to have ambient occlusion on and shadows off. To create a web scene, zoom to the extent of the scene you want to export and select the models in the viewport. Next, select Export Models from the File menu and then select City Engine Web Scene and press Next. In the General Settings page, make sure the output path goes to the Models directory in your current project. Give your web scene a name and leave the defaults for the rest. Now for the layer settings. You can see here layers in a layer group with the same name, in this case swipe, will appear in a swipe view in the web scene. For layer interaction, you can have pickable, locked, or the scene setting default. For the texture settings, you can see we have an option to export with the original textures, high quality, medium, or low quality, or half sized. For the layer state, you can have visible, hidden, or as a backdrop. So the panorama and the terrain here we're keeping as a backdrop and all the other layers are going to be visible. For the layers metadata, we can export metadata with each of the objects, which means when you click on the object in the web scene, you'll see that metadata behind the objects in the information pane. So for the visible layers, I'll select the scene setting defaults. And for the panorama and terrain, I'll set it to have no metadata exported. Now that the layers are set up, I'll go ahead and click Finish to create the web scene. 
When the export is finished, you'll find the web scene in a specified folder in your project space. In my case, it's in the models folder. To preview the file locally, double click the 3WS file and it'll open in a City Engine web viewer. The web scene will open in your system's default web browser. I'd recommend using Chrome or Firefox. You can see all our layers have exported. We also have the ability at the top to search for a particular object based on the attributes that were exported. The scene lighting settings that we exported are here as well. You can see we've got diffuse shadows turned on. If I turn those off and turn on direct shadow, I can adjust the sunlight settings using this slider. We also have the ability to add comments if you're signed into ArcGIS Online. This is a great way to get feedback from different stakeholders or people that are involved in your project or design. And finally, in the information tab, if we click on one of the objects, we're able to see all of the attribute information sitting behind that object. Now let's take a look at a web scene I exported with a group layer so we can see what the swipe function looks like. On the right hand side in the layer panel, you can see the swipe group layer here. If I click on the swipe function to enable it, I can swipe between the different layers in the group layer. Now, if we go back to City Engine, we'll see how we can share the 3WS, the web scene, to ArcGIS Online. So right click your web scene file and choose Share As. Then give your file a name, add an item description and some information such as tags and credits and access and use constraints. Sign into ArcGIS Online if necessary and then choose who you'd like to share your scene with. You can analyze the scene and then click the share button. City Engine will now upload your scene to ArcGIS Online. Once the process is completed, go to ArcGIS.com and sign in with your ArcGIS Online account. Once you're signed in, go to the My Content tab and find your web scene in the list. Click on it and it will open the item details page. In the open drop down menu, click on View Application. This will open your web scene in the City Engine Web Scene Viewer. In addition to City Engine Web Scene export, we can also export to Esri's file geodatabase. Each layer in your scene will become a separate multi patch feature within the exported geodatabase. This allows you to take your models back into ArcGIS for Desktop and do analysis and evaluation on your design. We can also export to Collada and OBJ, which are industry standard formats. There's also FBX, which is an advanced format that handles different texture layers like a dirt map or a bump map. We can also export to Eon software. So this is a partner format, and if you're exporting to Luminati or Vue, we recommend that you export using the Eon Software View option. If you're exporting into Unity or Unreal Engine, we recommend using FBX, OBJ, or Collada. Let's export using the FBX format for import into Unity. So select FBX and click Next. In this dialog screen, you'll see the output path name. It's important to create a new folder for the export because not only will you get the .fbx file, you'll also get a lot of different textures from the export. And these files will be JPEG or PNG format. In the exported content tab, we have the option to export models, or to export models and as a fallback to export the shapes. Under the terrain layers, you can select from a number of different options here. For this, we'll export all visible terrain layers and make sure the box is checked to simplify the geometry on the terrain. The next box here will take us through some granularity settings. The option here, one file as long as memory budget is not exceeded, will allow you to set or allocate a memory budget for the FBX file. If I specify 1000, it will export an FBX file up to a gigabyte. If I leave it as zero, 
it will export an FBX file of whatever size is required. You can also create shape groups to better sort the different components of the model. There's also a couple different options with mesh granularity. One thing to note here with merge meshes by material, as the model's being generated, the meshes are being applied based on the name. So for example, if I'm exporting my street model, each of the meshes are applied based on the name, asphalt, cement, etc. You can generally leave the geometry settings as the defaults, especially with the right all UV layers. This will give you the option to export all the UV layers, including bump maps or dirt maps if you have them in your scene. Now let's move on to the global offset. Typically in City Engine, you'll be working within a coordinate system. But when you export to a game engine, there's not always a coordinate space. Because of this, it's important to center the origin of the models you're exporting. Accept the default settings for the rest of the options here and just make sure that include materials and collect textures is checked on. Then press finish. The export time will vary depending on how much of the scene you selected. Now let's take a look at what we've exported in a popular game engine called Unity. You can download a free trial of Unity from this URL. When first opening Unity, you'll be prompted to create a project name and also a folder or location for the project to be stored. Once you've created the project location, we have to copy all of the textures and the FBX file that we generated in the export into this assets folder of our project. So navigate to where you exported the FBX and copy that whole folder and paste it into the assets folder of the Unity project. Now that we've created the project, clicking anywhere to make the window active will start the import process of the folder you just copied into the project space in Unity. Now that my project is imported into my project folder, I can expand the project and you see there is a folder with all the texture files, materials and the FBX file. Now to create a scene to import your FBX file into, go to File, New Scene, then locate your FBX file by going to the Search by Type button and selecting Model. Then drag and drop the FBX file either into the viewport or into the hierarchy window on the left. To navigate in the scene view, you can use the toolbar to pan, rotate and zoom, or you can use the keyboard shortcuts. Alt plus middle mouse will pan. Alt and the left mouse button will orbit the camera around the current pivot point. and Alt and the right mouse button will let you zoom in and out of the scene view. To adjust the lighting in your scene, click on the directional light option in your hierarchy window, and then in the inspector window, you'll see different options for adjusting the intensity of the light, the type of shadows, the strength and resolution of the shadows. So you can play around with these until you get the right type of lighting for the particular scene you're creating. Another way to adjust the lighting settings is to go to the window menu and click on lighting and you can see some other options here. We have ambient intensity and ambient inclusion and some options for changing the reflection intensity of the objects. The different tab panels you see in the editor interface are known as views. You can customize your workspace by dragging and dropping the views to create a layout that best suits your workflows. When you're happy with your layout arrangement, you can save your layout by going to the layer drop-down menu found on the toolbar and choosing Save Layout. Then you can name your new layout and save it and restore it anytime during your session. To change the panorama behind your scene, we can create a skybox. To do this, create a new material by choosing Assets, Create Material from the menu bar, and then in the inspector window, select the shader drop down in the top and choose Skybox Six Sided. Assign the six textures to each texture slot in the material. 
You can do this by dragging each texture from the project view onto the corresponding slots. I downloaded the Skybox assets you can see here from the Assets Store in Unity. To access the store, go to Window, Asset Store, and on your first visit, you'll be prompted to create a user account, which you can use when you revisit the store. The Asset Store is a great place to access the growing library of free and commercial assets created both by Unity and members of the community. Once you've assigned all of the textures to their corresponding slots, we need to assign the skybox to the scene you're working on. To do this, go to the Window menu and choose Lighting. In the window that appears, select the Scene tab, and then drag the new Skybox material to the Skybox slot. And from here, you can adjust the lighting settings to brighten your scene. To learn more about Unity, we encourage you to visit Unity's online learning resource located at this URL. Unity is a professional developer platform, and for those who are just being introduced to game engines, we also recommend taking a look at Lumen RT from Eon Software. In City Engine, let's export the scene again, but this time using Eon Standard Format. Select the format and click Next. The export options will be very much the same as when we were exporting using FBX. Make sure the scene is centered and for the output path, create a new folder to contain all of the textures and materials that are exported. Here I'm creating a folder called Luminati, and we can leave the rest of the settings as a default. Then click Finish to export the scene. To download a free trial of Luminati, go to this URL. Luminar Team makes a special package for GeoDesign that works directly with City Engine. They also provide a sample City Engine project, which will let you automate traffic and people via City Engine's rule file with Lumen RT code. Once downloaded, launch the software. You can select an initial scene environment from the options you see here. Select a scene option and Lumen RT will load the scene. In Luminati, many of the characteristics of the environment are preset. So you can easily change the sky from blue to overcast or from clear to hazy. Play around with some of these settings to see how they affect your scene. There are also options to add other models to your scene, like people, cars, and trees. To import our project, click on this button called Add Miss and navigate to Import Object, and then to the folder where we exported the file from City Engine. The size of the model you exported will determine somewhat how long it takes for the object to import. Once the model loads, zoom and pan to explore the scene. A scene in Luminati is called a live cube. And the idea is that these are completely self-contained 3D environments that allow the authors to place their models into a rich environment context complete with plants, trees, terrain, water, skies, clouds, etc. In Luminati, your mouse is the primary navigation device. If you'd like to see a tutorial on navigating through this environment, press F1, then click the Navigation Tutorial button. So to enhance this particular scene, I've imported some car models. And you can see once you select the object, you can rotate it and place it where it makes sense for your particular scene. Now you have the basic workflows to export your City Engine model into a gaming engine or a rendering application.